Hey, this is Alec. Welcome to White Whale Comics, and welcome to the fifth episode of my artist review series. And today we're going to be looking at Michael Turner. Michael Turner is certainly a legend in the comic book industry, and for good reason. So I would like to start off by just taking a look at his style and showcasing some of his artwork. While looking for content for this video, I decided to concentrate on black and white images only. I feel like uh, sketches and inked images really showcase what makes his artwork great better than the color versions. His line work, I really think, is pretty unmatched. It was confident and clean and detailed without being um, unnecessarily so. He really um, excelled at putting together these collage type images with multiple characters and making it flow together and making it uh, a cohesive image while still having individual elements to them. And his action and his movement and his scenes were fully realized and really didn't cut any corners when it came to uh, backgrounds or detail or anything like that. He, he took the time to make it 100%. And clearly he is still wildly popular. Um, but besides the fact that he was just good at drawing, why do we like his work so much? And that's not necessarily an easy question to answer, but to try to do it, I'm going to discuss realism versus iconography and legibility. And to help explain that, I'm going to reference this, Scott McCloud's stylistic pyramid, which looks like a lot but I'll try to break it down. There's three corners of the pyramid. Reality to the bottom left, meaning to the bottom right, and the picture plane at the top. And as you can see, as you move in either direction, you move more towards those things. So on the bottom left, it is a photograph. On the bottom right, it moves more towards simplified cartoons, and then to literally the word face. And as you move to the top, it becomes more abstract. To show you a maybe easier to read version of this, here's one by Scott Colbo. Kind of breaks it down a little more simply. And every artist consciously or subconsciously needs to decide where their work falls on this stylistic pyramid. I feel like Michael Turner's work was a bit unique on where it fell on this pyramid because it was rather realistic in a way and it wasn't abstracted at all but at the same time it was very stylized because Nothing looks like that, but it doesn't not look like that either. I don't know, that doesn't probably make a lot of sense. But you look at these images, and everything is fully recognizable. It's somewhere between something like a Jim Lee, where it's, you know, fairly as realistic as comic art may get and something like a Todd McFarlane which is or a Joe Mad which is exaggerated and stylized in a way that becomes more cartoony. This falls somewhere in between that where it is both and neither 
Let me try to elaborate. There's nothing really wrong with the anatomy of Superman here, but at the same time, it's not how a person looks, even a bodybuilder. It is stylized and decisions were made to make it look a certain way. Same thing with this Namor. I don't think anyone would look at that and say, oh, that doesn't look right, but it isn't. And that's not supposed to sound like a criticism. It's supposed to sound like a compliment. He found a way to create realism out of a style that was exaggerated and cartoony. Every line had a purpose, and every line was very deliberate. And you look at a scene like this, which is just chock full of people, and everything is detailed and realized, but everything is a cartoon, but it's not. Am I making any sense? take a look at a couple of very simple drawings. Everything being even, there are very few lines in both of these, but he still conveys form and movement and personality. So where do you put this on the pyramid? The flow of the hair and the details of the, the water droplets and the details in the armor, and you even look at his little sketches. They all have form and movement and flow, but clearly no woman looks like that. But he found a way to still not really make you question the fact that that's a real person. Again, no one can really bend that way or have a structure like that, but when you see this image, do you question it? I think that's what made him unique. He was able to exaggerate things, but in a way that made you believe. His work was detailed and it was unique and stylized, but not exaggerated. It's something that is not found very often. I hope I explained that the way I I hope I explained that in a way that conveyed what I'm trying to say. I'd like to wrap this up by sharing some personal anecdotes about Michael Turner. I got to meet Michael Turner on two separate occasions, uh, both times at the Pittsburgh Comic Con, and both times I received sketches from him that I feel very lucky to own. But as fortunate as I feel to have these sketches, um, meeting him is really what I feel even more thankful for. So like I said, I wanted to end this video by taking a quick moment to just share a couple of uh, stories about the times I met him. The first time I met Michael Turner, he had two televisions set up in his booth where you could play Halo and just kind of hang out just because he liked Halo. And um, over the course of the weekend, he ran kind of an impromptu tournament uh, just for fun. He gave away some prizes, but uh, I entered and actually and randomly uh, got paired to play against him. And, you know, we played and talked some trash and laughed when someone got a good kill, just like anytime you play Halo. 
you know, it, it wasn't really a huge deal, but it was to me. And it was something he didn't need to do, but he did it because that's the kind of person he was. And he kicked my butt. The second time I met Michael Turner, I actually played poker with him. Pittsburgh Comic Con had a charity poker tournament every year. And when I went to go sign up for it, they were like, oh, you're going to be sitting next to Michael Turner. And I was just like, okay, cool. But I was freaking out a little bit internally and figuring that, well, I, I gotta, gotta play this real cool now. And uh, I wasn't really sure if they were serious or not, but I get there and sure enough, there's Michael Turner and I sit down and uh, there's probably about 10 tables. So the fact that I sat next to him was strange happenstance. But we played poker and we talked some trash and had some laughs and he kicked my butt again. And this second time I met him, he was, you know, back um, struggling and, and fighting the cancer again. The first time I met him was after he thought he was in remission and was doing really well. <clears throat> But the second time, he was uh, he was getting pretty sick again, and the fact that he did that, you know, instead of just hanging out in his hotel room or whatever, was you know, again speaks to the kind of person that he was. And furthermore, uh, both years when I went to Pittsburgh Comic Con, at his booth. Despite having long lines every day, he made sure he took the time to connect with each person who came to see him. And he talked to them and asked questions and smiled and laughed. And my point is, he didn't have to do any of this, but he did. He showed as much appreciation to his fans as they showed him. And regardless of how great an artist he was, which he was, what makes him a legend in my book was the person that he was. Thanks for watching.